Hi again, here we are to continue talking about SpriteKit and making our game that will be kind of an endless runner kind of game, right? And in the last video, we left off with, uh, with this, right? We've got uh, two landscape sections that are scrolling by, right? Here's the first one and there's the second one. And then, you know, we kind of run out because they're not recycling. So we want to recycle the background. Okay, and we can't see the player or the ground right now because the landscapes actually are in front, so we'll have to fix the z-index too, but let's fix the scrolling thing first, okay, because that's the more difficult problem. So our landscapes are stored in a variable, an array called landscapes, right? And our landscape array contains an array of landscape objects, which are, you know, uppercase landscape, right? And this is our container class. Right? It's a sprite class, but it's a container, and then it will hold all the, you know, objects and stuff that'll make up the scene, right? Okay, and what we need to do is we need to check often, okay, where the landscape is in relation to the camera, and we want to find out when the landscape has gone out of the view of the camera on the left side, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to Update, and I think I'm going to mark Update um, with a comment here. An update um, is an important method in our game scene. This method gets called 60 times per second, or at least the computer tries to call it that often, right? Um, and we can use this to check on things. We can use it to animate things. We're using it right now to apply force, right? <clears throat> Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this to um, as a place to check our, our landscapes, okay? Um, what I want to do first, though, is I'm going to write a function down here to handle the checking, and then we'll just call that function from inside update, and that'll keep our code more organized. So let's write a function here, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write function, how about um, scroll landscapes. something like that, right? And what we need to do is we need to loop through the landscapes, right? So what we'll do is we'll write a for loop, and our for loop um, in this form will look at each item in the landscapes array, take the first one out, put it into the variable landscape, run the code block here where we can act on this object, and then go back up to the top and take the second item out of landscapes and put it into the variable landscape and then run the code block again. And it'll do this once for each item in here. And since we only have two items, it'll do it twice, okay? So the first thing is let's get the X position of our, this isn't really the X, it's more like a DX, right? Um, you know, the distance X from, you know, the difference between the position of the landscape and the camera node, okay? So essentially, like if you remember our diagram from before, what I want to do is I want to look for or find the distance from here, the center of the camera, to the left edge of the landscape here. Okay, because our, remember our, our node, the reference point is in the lower left, right? So, so this is zero, and then the, we need the width here plus half the width, right, to find the distance um, or to find out when it's out of view. So what we'll do is we'll say, uh, um, you know, dx equals landscape um, dot position dot x minus camera node dot position dot x, okay? And then we'll ask, we'll say, hey, you know, if, um, um, if the x value or dx value is less than, right? And what we need to do is we need to figure out this distance, like how far. So right now we've got the distance from, you know, I mean, this guy might be here, right? So we've got the distance from here to here. And now we want to find out if, if this distance is greater than the distance from here all the way out to there, right? So what we'll do is we'll say um, uh, landscape dot... Uh, size dot width did we have a variable for the size of the landscape i guess i didn't um, put that in so we can just ask the landscape how big it is right um, plus 
the um, size, and this is the size of our scene, okay, dot um, width divided by two, okay? So there's our distance there. And actually, our number is going to be negative, right? Because as we move our object across the screen, this, you know, if we think of this as zero, you know, we're going to be counting positive numbers to the right and negative numbers to the left. So if this number is less than this negative value, then we know it's far to the, to the left side or far enough to the left, right? So we'll, we'll finish off our if statement there. And if, the, if, the, if this is true, then we want to take our landscape from here and move it all the way back over to this side. And what that's going to entail is moving this two widths. So this is one width would take us to here, and a second width would move us there, right? So what we'll do is we'll say um, landscape dot... Um, position dot x plus equals so if we add to the width you know with a positive number it's going to move the landscape to the right and we want to move it um, landscape dot um, size dot width times two okay and then just as a note we're not going to do this yet but uh, maybe maybe we'll get to this right um, what we want to do here is um, you know, uh, reconfigure the landscape, right? So this means like change the content, you know, add new obstacles or new scenery and stuff like that. So every time our landscape cycles around, it'll look different, okay? So we can do that here because we know that we've recycled this one and put it back on the right side and we're gonna, it's going to come up next and we're going to see it, okay? So anyway, so let's, let's give this a try. And what we'll do is we'll call scroll landscape here after we move the camera, okay, in update. So I'll paste that here, and then we'll run our code. Oh, look, and then it cycles forever. Now, it's kind of speeding up because of the way that we're moving this guy, but we're going to fix that in a little bit. But hey, it works pretty good, right? It scrolled... Scrolled, scrolled pretty well there, right? So anyway, so we're doing pretty good. Um, we got a few other things to do. So what I want to do next is I want to move the ground into the landscape. Okay, so that way like it becomes part of the landscape and every landscape section has its own ground plane. So let's go to a game scene. And what we'll do is we'll just remove the ground variable here. And then that means we'll have, and it's perfectly okay, we can remove that, and now we're just going to get error messages wherever we've referred to ground, and that will just show us all the other things that we need to um, delete, right? So we'll delete that, we'll delete this, right, and I guess that's everybody, right? And then what we'll do is we'll go to landscape here, and remember we've got a we've got a class for ground too, right? So So what we'll do is inside the landscape, We'll say, hey, let uh, ground equal a new, you know, ground object, right? And in the in initializer in init here, what we'll do is we'll say um, ground equals, and then we'll use uppercase ground, right? And then ground needs to know the size, right? So we'll put in a size here. And we'll use the same size we used before, which I think was uh, width of the same width of our landscape, which is going to be size dot width and a height of 40. Okay, so there's our ground. And then maybe we will set up the ground here in setup. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll do add child um, ground. And then we'll say... Um, ground dot um, position x equals size dot width divided by 2. Remember the reference point is on the left side, so and this, the reference for the ground is in the center, right? So the reference for our scene is on the left edge though, right? So and then we'll set the uh, position y equal to size dot height um, 
or no wait, not size height, let's do ground dot size dot height divided by two, right? <clears throat> So we got that. And then maybe, you know, just to make sure things stack correctly, we'll set the, um, the Z position of the ground, okay? And what we'll do is we'll do Z position equals, uh, you know, let's just put this at 1 for right now, okay? And then we'll give it a test. Oh, so now this background section has a ground plane and this one has a ground plane and this one has a ground plane right and they just keep going okay so it's going to keep speeding up we're going to change that right um, but uh, but anyway we can see it recycling right we've got the ground plane in there so anyway so this is kind of working right um, and we'll we'll work more on this in the next video but I think this one covers enough ground for right now and anyway thanks for watching and I hope that that is informative